Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Provision SR seminar. We had some problem with today's invitation, and this is why we are quite a small audience, but that's okay. We are more than proud to educate, no matter how many people. Um, today's topic is uh, VMS part two. Uh, first of all, a few things. Please know that with, with this webinar is being recorded. You will get access to, the, to this recording at the end of this seminar. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to open your mic and ask away or write in the chat and I'll be asking on behalf of you. Today's topic is VMS part two. Uh, last week we did VMS part one when we went over almost most of the feature of the VMS, but in a nutshell. Today we are basically picked some very interesting feature and we are drilling down a little bit deeper, such as people counting, DDA, face recognition, and more. And with me is David, as always. And David, let's start. Go ahead. Thank you. Let's, let's start, Amnon. Okay. Okay. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Uh, about 200 people on this uh, webinar today. Uh, but it's good. It's like a, a private session. So everybody, if you have a question, ask away, open your mic, feel free. Everything is good. Um, so our goal today is to introduce some features of the VMS that are, are out there. Some features are new, some features are uh, not new, but uh, we don't always know that they are there since the VMS is a, a big platform with a lot of different, different options. So today we're gonna uh, see some some of the features that can make our lives and our clients' lives much more easier um, and, uh, and interesting maybe to, 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 to understand more, uh, more things, more features okay, that can help us in the end. So right now you're supposed to see uh, my screen okay, with the VMS. Uh, on the previous one, on the previous, previous webinar, you guys saw a little bit of everything, as Amon said. Today we are going to start with something that we don't always go into because that it's not searching for a face or analytic and such, but it's very, very important to know. We are talking about the operation and maintenance management. In this location of the VMS, we get a central place to see every bit of, a, of an event, doesn't matter if it is a recording or a, a technical event or a, 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 any other thing that is going on in our system. And just a reminder, our system can include 100 different NVRs, 1,000 different cameras. All of those uh, cameras provide information. All of the NVRs provide information. In this place, we can see all of it. And we can actually access each uh, and search uh, intentionally for the for the event that we that we want, without going into the playback and searching for a video. So let's see what we can do from here. We're gonna start with the check and export logs. Of course, we have logs from our systems, okay, recordings and such. We have a lot of types of logs. First of all, we can uh, filter according to the old types, so we can see any kind of uh, of a log that we want. Uh, we can also uh, filter, okay, between all of those logs. First of all, as soon as I press the all type, I'm, I'm getting all of the types of, uh, of events and I'm getting them from the 27th, this is today, until the 27th. Of course, we can change this date and get uh, uh, events from previous times. Just to let you know, on the bottom, we can see 1,000 and something uh, different events, uh, different pages. Okay, and in, each page, in each page, we have 50 different events. So with just an example, we can see here, uh, let's take, for example, uh, this one. NVR Israel, this is the name of the NVR. Street counting, this is the name of the camera. What did we have here? We had here a motion detection. Okay, we, can, we understand that there was a motion detection and we can also go into the playback and get immediate access to the playback that the, to the event, we can see the playback that uh, was caused because of this uh, event. Okay, next we can go ahead and using the subtype, we see here a small arrow, we can filter down to more specific events. Okay, so for example, if you're searching for, a, I don't know, let's search for 
uh, raid we do we won't have here some raid let's say uh, let's say okay area exit area entry temporary vehicle whitelist no mask suspected fever okay like we you can just choose the uh, amount of uh, uh, events that you want you press okay and you get the results according to what you were searching for okay temporary vehicle for example those are vehicles that entered uh, and of course you can see also then the plate number okay we have an lpr camera we're gonna get to that so this is just one of the examples an alarm log which is right here you get a filtration regarding two alarms alarm will normally be a recording of some kind whether it is a motion and of course in here we can see uh, we can get an ability to uh, filter once again according to the recording that we want to search for for example for sterile area okay so all of those events are sterile area in all in one place we can see the name yet again of the nvr of the camera with our playback okay and if we press on the playback we're going to immediately see that there is uh, some sort of a vehicle Okay, because we are dealing with intrusion, we chose intrusion on our subtype, and intrusion means that it's a basically a sterile area. Sterile area will always get a, a familiar object, which is a vehicle or a, or a human or whatever we set up to find. On the bottom left, we have more specific ways to search. We can search for server. Okay, we can search uh, an event that was caused because of a server of some kind. Of course, we're not gonna get anything because it's, it doesn't have to do with a, a alarm. Um, you can also choose between a device, whether it is an NVR or a camera. Maybe I need to not uncheck all of those, select all. Okay, okay. And now I guess that on the server also we will get some events. No, still no. Okay, so in the device, you can choose an area. An area can include a lot of other areas that include NVRs. We can see them right here. Uh, once we search for them, okay, we can see the results uh, based on the device that we, that we were searching for with the uh, recording, with the playback. Uh, pretty, pretty basic, I think. Okay, very easy to understand. In the operation log, okay, we can see a, a logs that regarding to the operation, meaning users that did a, something, maybe they searched for an event or changed a setting or configured anything. A, basically anything that a, a user has done, we can see it right here. So for example, in here, we can see that somebody, the device name client, the client was a, a, did some system maintenance, okay? The username that did it was admin, uh, and what what is the detail? What it actually did was searching log search. Okay, it was probably probably me a few minutes ago. Uh, same goes here. Okay, so you can you can have a detailed information about uh, what everybody what somebody did. It's very handy when you're dealing with an OSI VMS enterprise that uh, is uh, it has a lot of different branches. You have a lot of different users. We're gonna see how to create another user and another permission loop right soon. So uh, you have a control on what every user did. Okay, if something changed and you don't know who did it, go into the log, you're gonna get it uh, right away. Of course, you can export. Very basic, we can export it into text. All of the list that we can see here with all of the 285 different entries, all of them can be exported into text. Also the config log, config means if somebody changed a parameter in a camera, for example, or a user parameter, as we can see right here. Somebody changed a user parameter, we can see what he did. He added a permission group. The name of the permission group was tests. I did it on the morning webinar. Okay, so we have it right here. Also somebody changed the channel parameter, it was the admin. Of course, that in a normal situation, normal scenario, you will have the proper username. Here we use admin all the time, but it can be somebody else. And the fault log, if any uh, anything happened, like a, a server was disconnected, maybe if I will search for a month back, we will get something. 
Okay, never mind. So if you have uh, any kind of a fault, okay, something that uh, is not supposed to happen, a disk malfunction or any error that was uh, uh, provided by a device, then you're gonna get it right here. Our next section is backup and restore configuration. We get that question many times. How can we back up our system? We have a complete OSIA VMS. We uh, created many different users and permission groups and the alarm linkage and the views that we saved. How can we save it? Right here, back up the system configuration. Of course, you need to provide the system's password in order to do that. And then you can restore it on a different computer, on this computer, just a, a, a way to keep your settings alive at all times. In online status, you get a visual status of all of your devices. What can be your devices? A device can be an NVR and a camera and on your uh, decoder, for example. So in this case, encoding device status, we can see that we have 12 different devices. All of them are online, 100%. We can see them right here. Those are the cameras. Okay, you can see also the uh, a result for another area, which is a counting area, which has three different cameras. And in NVR area, we can see uh, NVRs. Ash.office is an NVR, NVR Israel is an NVR. We can see the number of channels. All of them are online. So we get here 100% of devices that are online. We have another section for decoders. Remember the decoder is the device that its, all, its all, sole purpose is to uh, to decode videos. It can decode up to, up to 144 different video channels that you can spread across four different screens. Every screen can support up to 36 uh, layout. So every screen, 36 uh, channels, doubled by four, it's 144. We can see here we have only one decoder. We can see the decoders, IP address, ports, and we can also have a shortcut for open up uh, uh, the, uh, open it up in the web browser if you want to set something up in the decoder itself. Same goes for server status. We can see here the alarm server, analytic server, all of the servers that make the OSI VMS a whole. Okay, the complete uh, OSI VMS is uh, made out of uh, a, a bunch of servers. Everyone has a different role. Of course, you can have different servers uh, that does the same role if you want to, to uh, manage your uh, um, almost. Okay, this is the, uh, load. the what? The load. The load, yes, the load. <laughs> I forgot that word. Uh, to reduce the load on the system, then you, of course you can divide the load between uh, different kinds of servers. So you can see the status right here with all of the information with, the, with their status. Storage server. Okay, in this, of course, in the server status, you can see also the storage server, but the storage server has a a section of its own. Why is that? Because we want to know how many channels are recording into that uh, storage server, okay? And how much space is available on it. <clears throat> Encoding device, one second. So in encoding device, we can see how many videos, uh, well, let's just go and see. Okay, if we will press on one of the NVRs, every one of them is an NVR. We can see how many channels are online, how many are not uh, in the form of a block. Okay, red block is a camera, white block is a camera which is offline. That's a, a graphical way to show us the status of the cameras. The last one is the status log. Status log will show us every bit of camera that is uh, currently on the, connected to the, to the VMS, <clears throat> regardless of the area that it is located on. So in this example, we can see 35 pages. We have 1,723 different uh, cameras that are total on, this, uh, on the system. Um, okay, we can see here that, uh, of course, we can see each camera three times, uh, mainstream, substream, and third stream. We can see which one is recording. Recording, not recording, not recording. And we can see a quick uh, glimpse of which camera is recording and which one is not. Of course, you can filter it out according to the status. If you want only to see the recording 
uh, cameras, then just filter it out according to the recording. And you have, uh, in this case, 604 different channels, and not the 1,000 something that we saw before. Uh, by the way, feel free to ask any question during our session right here. Okay, uh, next, we're gonna go into the local configuration. Local configuration is uh, our, confi uh, our settings that we are doing locally on the, um, on the VMS. Of course, we can do it remotely, but uh, we need to connect to our system using a client. So you can have a computer, a laptop in your home, but the management server is at the office. You're connecting using your computer into that management server and you get access to everything that I show you right now. Of course, you need to be an admin or a, to be a user that has the, a, the permissions in order to do that, the authorities. So first of all, we have here the playback source. When we record, when the cameras record due to motion or a face detection or a sterile area, it doesn't matter, the cameras record in, into somewhere. Either they will record into the network device, which of course is the NVR or the DVR, or they can record into the storage server. This button will determine where the VMS is going to take the playback when we are searching for a playback. So for example, if we are entering into the playback and backup, and we are searching for a recording from one of the cameras on the NVR, we press the search button, immediately we're gonna get recordings. Why? Because that the default uh, search place is taken from the a network device. We can see it right here on the bottom. Take a look at where the mouse is from network device. Now, if you will change that from storage server, I just pressed on it and, and manually change to no, a storage server, we're gonna press the search button. But in this case, we don't have any record data because this camera records only to the NVR. This is something that you can set easily from the VMS itself. If you want, if you know that you record on the storage server because you want to have a larger backup and you want to have a longer a period of time of a recording or playback, then of course it, we will normally go and change the default searching for the storage server so that immediately when we access the playback and backup, we will have recordings. Save recordings file too. You can choose where to save your recordings. What is the different? What is the difference between save recordings to save backup? Save recordings is when we are using the live view, for example, we're watching one camera and we press the record button, which is, which is right here. Okay, start local record, start local recording. The saving path is C record. Okay, this is the recording path. And what is the backup? The backup is when we are searching for a backup right here, and we want to back up our uh, already recorded uh, video, but we want to download it into our computer, then it's going to go into the C backup. So how, we, how can we determine what, what will be the default path to save our recordings right here under local configuration? Okay, so we backed up some video parts, uh, video recording, what will be the format? This is where we can choose it. We have AVI, we have DAT, DAT, and you have MP4. It depends on what you want to do. By the way, AVI and MP4, you guys all know, but MP, but DAT, uh, DAT is uh, is the original file how it is being saved on the system itself. Meaning it will go under no encoding whatsoever. VMS will encode to AVI or to MP4. In DAT, it won't uh, encode anything. It will just give you the raw a video as it was saved on the system. So the benefit of it is, uh, is that you can use the uh, player, okay, provision ISR player, the RPAS, uh, that will allow you to view the cameras like you are on the NVR. For example, if you back up eight cameras, you can play back all of them on eight channels, okay, and on split screen to eight, for example, or to nine, uh, because it's symmetrical. Um, using the RPAS, this is something that a VLC or media player cannot do, of course, because it's AVI and MP4. On DAT, you can play with it like it was an NVR. Snapshot, no need to talk about it, I think, where to save the snapshot and how many snapshots will be saved once you do it. Uh, max file size for manual recording and record backup, of course, you can, 
you can limit up to two gigabyte. You can reserve it for uh, recordings because you don't want to uh, blow up your uh, uh, HDD on your computer, of course. Now, it has nothing to do with the storage server. When we record to a storage server, we do it from a complete different place, from the alarm linkage that we're gonna touch, I believe. System startup and maintenance. We're not gonna go through all of it, of course, but let's touch the important things. Uh, auto startup, auto login. Okay, you open up the VMS, it will log in automatically. Do not just cancel this one if this VMS is being used on a, on a pu public computer and every user has its own user to log in. And of course, of course, we don't want it to log in automatically. Auto startup, the VMS will be starting up as soon as the computer is being turned on. Um, show a message if the device goes offline. Of course, very useful if you want to have um, a, a message uh, if an NVR lost his power or something, lost his IP address or anything. Um, let's see if there are anything here. Worth mentioning, wonders what you will know. Okay, so <clears throat> um, video streaming rules depends on your computer's strength. Okay, you can choose whether you want to put all of your power or your computer's resources on the real time priority, meaning to show the video as soon as it really happens, or to give it a, a priority for fluency meaning that the video will run more fluently, you will see all of the frame per second, but maybe you, we will have a delay of a few seconds. Not one hour, nothing to worry about, but of course, that, uh, if you're more interested on the quality, you choose fluency. You're more interested about the immediacy, choose the real-time priority. Another very important thing that uh, we can use where if you want to add another layer of security is the required password when exiting the program. If you are an operator and you don't want people to just leave the VMS and start wandering around the web, just mark the yes. And whenever somebody somebody tries to exit the VMS, it ne he needs to uh, put a password. Okay, so the VMS cannot be closed. Of course, the better choice if you want to have an operator to watch only the videos without any other option, the better choice will be to use a client or CMS CLS, uh, which will uh, which is based on Linux. No system other than Linux, so we cannot do anything else but using the VMS. Select language, there are many different languages that are being supported by the VMS, okay, English, Portuguese, French, a lot of different uh, languages, time display mode. Um, okay, so we saw here that there is trigger audio when the device is offline, uh, so, it, or a show message. Now, if you want to not only trigger the uh, audio, but to choose the audio that is going to be triggered, then you can choose an alarm audio, okay? You can choose the audio that will be uh, used when the uh, offline device uh, is on, and select the sensor alarm audio. Also, you can choose the audio file. Overload settings, we can see down below, I don't know if you can see it, uh, right here down below, we can see the CPU usage and the memory usage, okay, according to how much uh, modules we are opening right now on the VMS itself. It's, it talks about the management server. I'm now connected through my laptop into a management server, which is on another different floor, but uh, basically I'm on the management server. So we can see, uh, okay, we can see how much uh, a load is being put on that management server, and of course we can choose uh, when to limit some actions under which uh, circumstances. If it's 95% of CPU, 90, 85, and same goes for memory usage. Alarm view is the pop-up. We can choose to see, to see pop-up messages when an event taking place. If, for example, we want to have a pop-up of 16 channels whenever a a human being is being detected in the middle of the night in a specific camera. For example, we want to have a pop-up of 16 channels, so we can choose, okay, we can choose how that window is going to look like and when to display it and where to display it. So first of all, open alarm window automatically. It will open a, a window, open in full screen instead of a, a cascaded one, a smaller one, smaller window, you can have it in full screen. And 
very important is that you can choose on which monitor to display it. If you have a, a VMS, if you have a computer with uh, two monitors, then you can choose a different display. If you have three monitors, you can choose on which one to, uh, uh, to, to throw the, this one into. Okay, the pop up the window. Automatic close after how much time and what will be the number of screen between four, between one to 16 different screens that this layout is going to contain. The maximum is 16. Always the position on the cameras themselves. There is an always D that is being created by the VMS itself. You can use a, okay, you can just drag where to show this information on which side of the screen. This is something that normally we don't, uh, me personally, don't find any re good reason to, uh, to touch it. Um, okay, in system settings, if you want to preserve some uh, uh, power for your system, then you can use for the alarm view, okay, you can use the third stream, which will give you bad quality, but will give you more, uh, uh, your computer will have more available uh, uh, power, okay, more available resource to use. Uh, if you have an alarm out of schedule, it won't be displayed. And really the most important thing here is if you use a VMS that has a lot of different devices in different parts of, uh, of, of the city, of the country, it doesn't matter. And you want all of them to have exactly the same time, the same hour, based on the management server, this is where to do it. We can choose a device time. Okay, we can synchronize the time into all of the devices. All of them will be accurate to the millisecond. The NVR, DVR, and cameras, all of them will have exactly the same time. So you won't have a situation where in one place you need to search at 4 p.m. and the other one will be 3 p.m. and it is actually the same time. Okay, it will synchronize the time. Of course, this one is not recommended if you have um, uh, devices that are located on different GMTs, different time zones. Of course, in this case, we want to have a different uh, time for every device. Audio uploading. We can use audio files for many different events, events that I mentioned before. Actually for any event, and I'm going to show you right now in the alarm linkage, I'm gonna talk about it more very soon. But for example, okay, for example, let's take a sterile area, okay, DDA analytic. When a person is being uh, identified in any one of these cameras, we have here a lot of different triggers, audio, it is a control record. Don't be confused because of the audio. This audio is only for local. The local laptop will give you an audio, like a beeping sound. But we have here voice broadcast, right here. So voice broadcast, once a human being is being detected on the camera that we just chose to the left, uh, we are going to, uh, get a voice out of the device that we will choose right here. So you can choose voice to be sounded by all of these NVRs and DVRs. Of course, if, if you're protecting a prison, this can be a good idea to sound the sirens in all of the locations all at once. We can turn it on and then we can choose the audio file for each camera. Okay, we have here three different uh, audio files, shame that I'm guitar, I just picked up random names. So every file has a different, uh, of course, is a different file. You can upload to the system and then broadcast it. VMS will broadcast it as soon as this event is taking place. You can do it for every, every kind of event. Video loss, okay, the technical issues or uh, analytics, motion detection. Okay, the idea is, uh, is clear. What are the, how the file should be, uh, should be? file should be as this, as follows, 16,000 hertz, 16 bit, mono, the file size should be less than 10 mega, a mega, megabyte, the file format should be WAV. Those are the demands for the uh, VMS to support the file and to be able to transmit it into the, uh, into the devices. We need to remember that the devices are not stereo, they are mono, it's a camera, it doesn't have a, a stereo connection. Um, so of course we need to follow this and of course we can give it a name and browse for our file. We upload it to the system and then we can use it. If we remember those names, shame data and guitar, those are the uh, names of the files that we, uh, we could choose right from here. Okay. Next, we're gonna talk about some account and permissions. So account and permissions is really our ability to control 
what will be the authorities that every user will have. So we do not believe in giving every user its own uh, permissions because it, it will be a heck of a job because we have one user, we can have 10 different users, we want to provide to all of them the same exact authorities. So our authorities are being given by creating the permission group. So let's delete this permission group and create it once again. So we're gonna add a permission group. We can give it a name. The permission group contains all of the uh, permissions that we want to provide the, those users. So for example, for example, let's say sales department, right? We have the sales department. We want to provide all of them only viewing abilities. So in area permissions, we can give them, we know that they are located in Israel. Okay, the sales department is located in Israel. We want to allow them live view, okay? And we want to allow them playback. Watch playback and have live view. That's it, no more. And of course, we can choose uh, from the cameras in this uh, NVR, uh, we can pick pinpoint to uh, those specific cameras that you want to allow their permissions. Of course, that you can also have TV wall permissions, give them the permission to perform TV wall tasks, this is the TV wall, this is the name of the TV wall. Uh, for those of you who were on the previous webinar, you know, you probably saw it. Uh, target library permissions, okay. The library of uh, faces, databases, permission for ad adding a face, viewing faces, delete a face, modify a face, some system permissions. If you have the technical department, not the sales department. So probably you would like to have them, uh, it will give them a, a more, uh, uh, permissions such as the resource management to add or edit the device, things like this. Um, and the operation permission, of course, if you, want, if you want to allow them to operate electronic map, meaning to adjust it, modify it, uh, modify to be able to back up and restore the system. Okay, so this is where we do it. Okay, once we are done with our permissions we created, we have here a new group, sales department, um, the sales department, if you will go to the edit, we will see that it did not save for some reason. Let's give it another chance. Area. Okay. So we have here, okay, we have the permissions that we have chosen. If you will do some more permissions, we're going to see them on really on the front. Like here, backup and restore. Okay, you can see the details. For, all, for the permissions you did give this group. So we don't have to access to the group in order to see the permissions. You can see them right here on the, on the main screen. In user account, this is where we add uh, our users. So let's add a user. Okay, let's call it user one. Um, and here we can choose the, of course, the group that it will be a part of. Okay, you can give him password. What will be the password for this user? Confirm password. If you want to really play it safe, you can bind them to a MAC address. If this user is connecting through one computer and one computer only, give the MAC address of, of this computer, that's it. He won't be able to connect from different computers as well. Okay, that was for the account and permission. Uh, next we're gonna go, it's, will, it will be a short one about the alarm center. I'm gonna really touch uh, some things here. Um, First of all, first of all, we talk about um, we talk a lot about the schedule. We have schedule in many different locations in people counting and in the face detection and the DDAU and when to activate tasks and when not and and also in the alarm linkage itself. In the end of every trigger that we want to operate, we have the schedule. What is the schedule? The schedule means when we are going to operate. When we are when this uh, task is going to be uh, active, okay, this is the correct phrase. How can we set up schedule? We go into schedule settings. It's right here in alarm center, and in schedule setting, you can. By the way, all of them are uh, the 24/7, five days a week are pre-created, okay. But you can create a schedule of your own, of your own, and you can mark when the schedule is going to be active, we have your day Sunday until Saturday. So you can choose the proper schedule for you. And then after all, after that, your own, you can choose when to activate your uh, task. 
and you can choose your own uh, schedule. Okay, so it gives you really customized uh, ability to control when things are going to happen. Uh, SOP, you notice the touch touch touched it uh, before standard the operation procedure. It will give the operator the exact tasks that he's supposed to do when something happens. For example, call the supervisor. Uh, okay, we have here the list of SOPs. This is one is them, server room breach, burglary, office breaking, and every one of the SOPs has its own list of actions needed to be done. Okay, so of course that we can uh, bind an SOP that we created, parking bridge, for example, we can bind it into, for example, okay, one of these events. Uh, we have server offline alarm, I just chose it just for fun, have your SOP, and we choose, okay, the server room bridge or the burglary, whatever you want. Whenever this event taking place, we are going to get the SOP right here down below. We can filter according to SOPs and we need to process this, uh, this exact uh, event. Once we process it, uh, then it's uh, written in stone and cannot be changed and altered. Okay, next will be our uh, uh, email. So a new feature that was added latest, lately to the VMS was the ability to send email from the VMS. Since the VMS does not uh, support yet, at least, in push notifications to our smartphone, this we can have is to get email, which could be even better because we can send emails also to other computers, also to devices, laptops, and even televisions. So email settings, this is where we are going to set up our email, including the email from where the email is going to be sent. Okay, it's going to be sent from this email address. We set up all of the different, okay, all of the parameters, and we can add recipients. Okay, and after that, when we go to alarm linkage, take a look, this is uh, the main uh, place where we're going to handle the, okay, the, the different events. So in trigger email, we can choose the, okay, the recipients that will get this event into their uh, email uh, box. Amnon and Tal Hanoch, only two of them will get an email message whenever a server is offline. So Amnon, if you start to get some messages today at night, I don't know what to do. Okay, uh, we've been through that, we've been through there. Okay, perfect. Um, next, we're going to see some things that I know that noticed that uh, it didn't touch before. We are going to go into this really two short examples of uh, special playback methods. One of them, Okay, one of them will be the NVR Israel. We are going to get some uh, recordings. We're gonna get some recordings from one of our cameras, but we're going to search only for a face. We have here, in this is the new playback by the VMS. We have the regular playback, searching for a face and searching for a plate. The regular playback is, okay, very clear. I know everybody know it. We're not gonna touch it. We're gonna touch search for a face straight from here. So what can we do? we can press on the plus button, okay? And then we can search for a face which can be found on our computer or we can get it from our NVR. We press the search button, let's search from different NVR, let's search from here. Wait a second, okay. Okay, so we can search, we can choose a, a face and we can search for that face throughout the entire area. Let's give it a second to search. So this is basically a new way to search, uh, to search for a face. Okay, now the thing is that we won't get a list of events. We are going to get straight away the video playing back. Take a look to the bottom, even though that we immediately notice that we can see the same face throughout all of these different cameras. Okay, and all of the different cameras, we can see exactly the same face. Uh, on the bottom, right here, we can see a blue marks. Every mark, every blue, it means that those, the same face 
was captured by our system um, and we can play it back. Okay, so if you search for a face and you want to immediately search for him to see him uh, in any of the cameras, then this is the way to do it. Now, say go, same goes for a vehicle for an LPR. So I will search for example, yeah, it didn't work. <laughs> okay, so um, NVR Israel, in this case, we are going to just search for a plate, plate search. No, not here. Uh, second. Okay, so in this, uh, in this uh, way of search, you can basically search for a plate and you can base your search on a specific plate number. So for example, I will write here one, two, one, two, three. Okay, I press one, two, three, I search for a plate and, okay, we are in window two. So right now we are going to see only a vehicles that has one, two, three on their license plate. Let's get into mainstream so we can see it better. Okay, so for example, in this Jeep right here, we can see the letters, the characters one, two, three. By the way, when I search for one, two, three, I'm gonna get those one, two, three in the same order. One, two, three, right here. Let's go to the next blue part, which is located right, I'm going to zoom in right here. Take a look at where the mouse is right here. And let's play it back. We have here one, two, three. Okay, this is the, maybe this is the same Jeep, I don't know, but this is a different recording. Let's skip up ahead, half a day is passing, maybe half a half an hour maybe. And then we're getting another vehicle. Let's see if this is the one. I'm going to zoom in, this is a Kia, one, two, three. So I think that the idea is very clear. You can search for a, a vehicle. Of course, that you can search for the entire characters, 81, zero, one, two, three, and eight. So if I will search for the entire plate number, then in this case, if I will search for the entire plate number, then I will get a, let's do it right here. Okay, so in this case, we're gonna get only this uh, this uh, vehicle. Now, of course, you can see that this vehicle was probably the same case. This is the same vehicle. It was passing again later on in that day. Okay, 810123. In this case, window four, this is the one that is marked black. It doesn't have any blue, only two of them because those are the two only times that this vehicle was passing in this street. Okay, this is a very good way to search for a vehicle very quick if you know the day and the time that you can just search for him. Okay, um, let's continue into our uh, next chapter, which will be the face greeting. So face greeting, the purpose of it is to greet someone when he is crossing into your office, into your store, into your branch, into anywhere that you want to let him know that you know that he's there. You know that your VIP client is over there. Say hello or give him a special greeting. How can we do it? So right now we are in the face greeting. Okay, I'm gonna just show how it works, not how to set it up. Um, basically, we are going to choose the camera that we plan that this camera will uh, identify the human being, the person. Uh, we are going to project it into screen one. You guys cannot see it yet, but there is another screen. Okay, my computer is connected into two screens. By the way, you must have two screens in order to do it. We can see it right here on the display settings. Okay, on the bottom, we will choose all of the cameras that, uh, that we want whenever those cameras are identifying this person or a person that is on our VIP list, then we want to have this greeting message. So in the display settings, we can choose a lot of different things. We can choose what will be the background. You're gonna see it right in a second. We can see the background. We can choose between multiple different kinds of colors. Okay, I think that, okay, select color. Okay, you can choose between all of these colors or you can choose a background picture. You can uh, walk your way into the uh, picture that you want. 
you can also add a video, meaning the video that will be played by the camera that you chose. And you can choose the pure color background, you can choose a logo. So on this uh, screen that is waiting for someone to come, you will have the logo of your, uh, of your company, okay? Your company, your, uh, uh, or whatever logo you want to, to put there. So it will always show. Okay, now I'm going to share, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to share the other screen with sound, so you guys will be able to share, to see the sound. By the way, right now you can see that the greeting language will be, the greeting message will be welcome, and the birthday greeting will be also welcome. You can change it. Whatever you are writing right here on the VMS, this is what the VMS is going to say. Okay, it has a voice engine. Uh, it sounds very good. You can use it and, uh, of course, uh, give your customers a personal uh, notice. So let's see how it goes. Now we are seeing the other screen. Okay, the welcome message. I'm going to take one of the cameras that I prepared before and look into it. Welcome, A. David. Okay, so of course, this is not a picture from right now. This is the picture that was saved. Okay, it was saved on, it's saved on the database. The, uh, the database can be seen right from here, the VIP search. Okay, we have a VIP list. We have the names of the people. Of course, we, uh, you have also the images down below. Okay, every, uh, oh, you cannot see it. Wait, wait a second. You cannot see it. Okay, now you can see it. We have the VIP search. Okay, in the VIP search, we can see the list of people that are part of the VIP group. We can see their picture down below. Every one of these persons, whenever they will be identified by any of these cameras, it is located right here. Okay, then you're gonna get a message, including the name that the system knows how to spell, how to say. Um, Okay, of course, you can also use this tool uh, as a way to search for your clients. So you can search for the VIP clients that were captured by this uh, by the camera. Not sure if we're gonna have more than the one that I just did. Okay, we have only one, but, oh, no, sorry, yes. This is, okay, when you choose the name, you can search for him. So David was captured many times today. Mark was captured only once. Um, and this is how you can search for a, for somebody specific. Okay, our maybe, probably the last, yes, it will be the last uh, subject for today. It will be the people counting. I remind you all that if you have any questions, don't hesitate, please ask me. I'm feeling quite alone. So <laughs> ask a question, we're gonna get, provide you answers. If any, if you don't have any questions, good news for me. Um, Okay, so people counting, most of you already know it. Okay, you know, you guys know how to use it, how to uh, do things with it. But of course, it's always good to, uh, to repeat those things and maybe to uh, learn something new. So we have here a few options, real-time statistics, heat analysis, statistic reports, occupancy control. We're gonna go through each and every one of them very briefly to understand, but briefly, but deeply in order to really uh, understand how it, uh, how it works. So first we're gonna choose our area, okay? The area that contains our cameras that can count, what cameras can count, eyesight V2 cameras can count, they can face detection, they can sterile area, they can do line crossing, all in one, uh, one series. So all of those cameras are being chosen. Right now we have a V on all of them. I'm pressing apply and get a lot of information. What is this information? 527 people has crossed inside throughout all of these cameras for today. Comparing to yesterday, we have a growth of almost 13%. We have 460 people that has entered, meaning that we have about, a, I don't know, doesn't matter, 67 people that are uh, still inside our facility. Uh, and we have also the proportion against yesterday. How many people has exited today against yesterday? So yesterday we had uh, uh, 17% less. How many people are inside? 67. This is the amount of people that are currently inside our, uh, uh, in, uh, in our offices. If I will 
unmark one of the cameras, for example, street counting, I will take it out of the equation, I will press apply, the numbers will change accordingly, okay? Now, this, uh, this window represents the real-time statistic. It will be updated every minute. You can choose to update it every minute, every five minutes, every 10 minutes. So we can use it as, a, as, a, as another screen that shows you a constant information, information on how many people are currently inside, how many entered, how many left. Great tool. Also, we have this information in the form of a graph. You have two uh, kinds of graphs, okay? You can choose, of course, this, gra this graph shows you human beings to the, in the uh, uh, y-axis and uh, hours on the x-axis. You can choose which information to show, which not to show. The blue one says in, how many people entered. The pink one says, uh, the pink size says, the pink one says out, how many people left. What are the light, okay, the light blue and the light uh, pink? Same for yesterday, okay? You, ha you have the comparison for yesterday. You have the same information in the form of a cake, including the ability to see the live view of the camera, and you have the same uh, uh, information in the form of a table. Okay, we can see that this is the name of the cameras, the big counting, font counting. Those are the cameras that we chose. You can see the how many people entered, entered and left. Uh, in between those hours, okay, we can see up until now, of course, that uh, we don't have information for up, uh, after uh, 4.55 because we haven't reached there yet. Um, of course, you can also export all of the information into, a, okay, you can export it into a, into a, a graph, into a, an Excel. I'm going to show you a graph that I already did before in the morning. Okay, it has the same information with the colors, with the name, with the a numbering of the people, how many entered and left. You can use it with Excel and set it to the right department to handle those information. Now, whatever we just did, it, it is regarding to only, okay. I'm not if you can hear me, let me know because my computer is starting to do some trouble here. Yes, yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, I'm sorry. we're getting back there. So whatever we just did was real time, meaning only for today, the 27th of July. But of course that we want to use it as a tool to have statistics for a longer time before. So I'm going into the statistics report. You can see that it is exactly the same screen like before. I'm going to do exactly the same thing like before. I choose the counting area, which contains the counting cameras. But in this case, instead of having a daily report, I'm going to choose a weekly or a monthly report. Let's choose a monthly report. You can choose the entire month of July, which will give you about 8,000 people entered, 8,000 people left, including the tables and all of the other information that we saw before. Okay, you can see everything. In this case, the table is divided not by hours, not by hours, but by uh, days, okay, of the month. And of course, you can add, remember the, Remember that we have here. Oh, if you press on a day, it's very cool. If you press on a day, you get the hours of that day. Okay, we have another table to be opened up. Okay, and we can see that day specifics about the hour. Okay, very nice. Uh, we have here 8,000 people. If I will add to that July, uh, June as well, another month, then we have already almost 20,000 people. Uh, this is, by the way, a great uh, reason to use the servers instead of using a laptop, for example, because the server will normally be put on a server room, which will be protected with power storage and uh, uh, against, uh, uh, you know, things that could cause him to disconnect or even uh, human mistakes. And this is the reason we have here such high numbers. Those servers are constantly working all the time gathering information, which helps us uh, to provide a lot of uh, statistics. Another thing that you can do, okay, I'm not, I think, it's, okay, you can, you can have information from a date until a date, okay? You can choose between June to July or uh, things like this. But really important is the um, uh, heat analy analysis and occupancy control. In the heat analysis, you can have, you see here, uh, if you saw the previous webinar, you saw how to create different maps. So we have a lot of different maps. We have Israel, you have 
uh, Ashdod, and you have uh, Office. Inside Office, I have placed three of the cameras that can count the front counting, okay, the street counting and the back counting. Um, we will have, um, we are going to have a, a red mark, a color that indicates how many people crossed you through the, those cameras. So if the color is more red, then it means that more people has crossed. If it's more green, then less people has crossed. Of course, it depends on the, on the it, it is relatively changes between the, dif the differences between the different cameras. Okay, it, it's, very, it's relative. In a occupancy control, this is where we can actually create a limitation for how many people can enter or exit to a certain location. So we can create a task if you want to limit the how, much, how many people will enter into a building due to COVID-19 or any other reason, then we can create a task. Uh, we can call it a name, we'll give it a name, and uh, let's call it just task one, task two, maybe task one I already have. We will choose the cameras that will be a part of the combination. We don't want to gather information only from one camera. We want to have the total number that was calculated from all of these cameras. So we're going to choose the cameras and we will choose the maximum threshold, meaning how many people can are allowed into the building. For that example, we're gonna choose 10 people. Uh, of course, we can choose if it's a human or a vehicle, so we can also use it for parking lots, for example, or any other location that you want to know uh, when the limit has been reached, if you're talking about bicycles or motorcycles. And schedule, we talked about before, choose the schedule when this task is going to be active. That's it, we press the okay, we have your task. The task will be updated as soon as somebody will cross in any of these cameras, it just happened, you can see. On the upper left corner of the screen, this camera was, people was crossing there. And now instead of a vacancy of 10 people, we have 15. And why is that? Because of the difference in this camera between the amount of people that enter to the amount of people that exit, uh, gives us extra of a, 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 a people. So actually, no, it's supposed to give us more people enter than left, then we should have a, 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 another occupancy, but uh, it is due to the street counting camera. Okay, in the street counting camera the down below, we have much more people, 132 that exit than the one that entered. So we have more people that are allowed to enter. Of course, that uh, as soon as this camera will be uh, uh, updated as well, as soon as somebody is passing right here, we're gonna see totally different numbers. Uh, you can take this task, okay, and just throw it away into a different screen, as I can do right now. You can just tear it about from the main window, take it to another screen, place it in the exterior part of your uh, of your uh, building or to the manager's office. So it has a constant indication of how many people are inside, how many can enter, and you know to uh, to call uh, whoever needs to be called whenever uh, too many people are inside. Or maybe we can to make it automatic. How automatic? We have here task two. We can go back into the allow linkage that we talked about before. We can choose here one of the events, which is called please wait while the red light on. So you can choose to turn on a red light on the outside of the door when nobody is supposed to be entering. Then uh, when the, uh, once the, uh, the task is finished, okay, too many people are inside, then you choose what to do. Okay, you can do everything that we just talked about before, including the email, or maybe the more, uh, uh, the more uh, correct things to, thing to do will be to activate an alarm output in the cameras that you want or the NVRs that you want. And those outputs, you can connect them into a red light or you can connect them to a door which will be locked or whatever need to be done in order to prevent more people to enter so they do not infect everyone in COVID-19 or any other reason to do so. Um, okay, if there are uh, any other questions, uh, please feel free to ask. In the meantime, I'm going to think if I have left something out in the open. Nothing on the chat. I've learned a few things, I know. 
Yeah, I have a question on the private. All the things discussed here today can be done directly with NVR or only with BMS software. Um, um, all of the I, things. I, I'll, we, I'll answer it. Today's seminar was about the VMS, and actually everything we've, we've seen and shown is about the VMS software. And sometimes it's very similar to some of the features also exist on the NVR, but uh, for a better understanding about which one, uh, contact us and check with us what kind of feature you can have and or watch one of our previous webinars. But what we, we've seen today is about the VMS. Thank you, Amnon. The uh, one thing that the VMS can do that the NVR cannot is to combine the information from the counting. A lot of more things, but this is the more, uh, <clears throat> more <clears throat> the more uh, bold things crosses my mind is that uh, if you want to combine uh, information from uh, many cameras that can count want to know how many people are inside based on the data from all of them, uh, NVR cannot do that, only the VMS can do it. Well, David, thank you very much for today. Uh, we yeah, are man. here for, the, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we are here for the next 10 minutes, so feel free to any questions you have. Uh, if not, again, the recording of this webinar is available on our website. Hope to see you in our next one. We'll continue with some questions.